Greetings from my second home in Paraguay. Today's topic is a difficult one, and um, this is gonna be hard for me to talk about because I like to give very clear definitive answers and very clear definitive solutions to problems, and this is one of those scenarios where I can't do that. I can only provide you with scenarios that are least bad and not necessarily good. And there are many times no good options for men in these scenarios. As a father myself, I directly relate to this problem even though I know a decent percentage of you don't currently have this problem, although some of you will have this problem at some point in your future. And the problem is this. You say to me, and I've gotten your emails, I've gotten your comments, I've gotten your DMs, I've, I've heard this from a lot of you. You say to me, Caleb, you're right. I wanna get the hell out of my authoritarian, high tax, collapsing, horrible, cerveza sickness, mask wearing Western country. I wanna go somewhere that is better, but I have small children. I have physical or 50-50 legal and physical custody with their mom. I no longer am with their mom. Their mom doesn't want to move out of the country. So what do I do? If I move out of the country, I lose my kids or don't see my kids. If I stay in my country, I suffer and go down with the ship. What do I do? In this video, I'm going to analyze this in detail because enough of you have asked me this question to give you some answers on this. They're not 100% perfect answers, but it will give you the answers as I see them. And this is Sovereign CEO, I am Caleb Jones. I show people just like you how to create location independent income, move to a better country, or just set up an international backup plan, all without spending a lot of money. And many of you, like me, are fathers. I am a father, my son is 29, almost 30, my daughter is 23. So I relate to this, I relate to the feelings when guys write me about this, my heart goes out to you because I, I understand those feelings. I remember how I felt when my kids were little. So first off, in terms of the overarching aspect of this, this is one of those scenarios where there is no good answer. All options suck. AOS, as they say in the military. All options suck. No matter what you do, it's going to be bad. I'm gonna go through several options in a minute. They're all terrible. There are some options that I think are a little less terrible than others, but even those options are still terrible. So just realize that there's no magic bullet to this problem. You're gonna to have to suffer to some degree no matter what you choose in terms of this lifestyle and that's just the way this goes. I wish I had better news for you, but I don't. Now in terms of my example, one of the reasons I waited to move out of the country, so let me, let me backtrack for a minute here and give you the dates. I first made the decision to move out of the United States way back in 2003. That's when I mentally made the decision. I said, and I was married at the time to my first wife, I said, let's move later. Uh, in 20 years, the United States is not gonna be a very nice place to live. Boy, was I right. And so that was 2003, that was a long time ago. And then in earnest, I began working on my Five Flags projects and moving out of the country in 2012. Now, why did it take me so long? The primary number one reason, and, and I told people this at the time when they asked, is because uh, my children were still small. My children were still little, I didn't want to abandon my kids. And as soon as my youngest child hit 18 and grew up, uh, I got the fuck out of there, <laughs> more or less. Now, here's the problem. Back then, I had time to wait. So back in 2006, if you made the decision in 2006 to move out of Europe or the United States or Canada or Australia, you had time to sit down and make plans and formulate action plans and actually get that done. You had time, you, there was no rush back then. Is that true today? No. So unfortunately, you guys have small children today. Waiting is not an option unless you've made that conscious decision to just stay in your current collapsing country and suffer like everybody else there. That's just the way this goes. So I had the advantage of getting an early start on these things, and as soon as my kids were old enough, I pulled the trigger and got the hell out of there. Now let me clarify one other thing. I'm only talking here about young children. Those of you who have kids under the age of 18. In my opinion, this is my strong opinion, and this is not alpha male 2.0, this is just Caleb's opinion. Once your kid turns 18, that kid is an adult, and they're on their own. That's how I feel about my kids. I love my children. My children are my two bright stars in the world. I love them to death, both of them. But they're over 18, they're well over 18. And so in my world, I'm not gonna sit there and kiss their ass or take care of them or I'm gonna be available for them wherever I am in the world. They can always come out and fly out to see me. I will visit with them once or twice a year. Yes, but I'm not gonna be there in terms of all the time for my grown kids over age 18. So I'm only talking to you guys who have small children. If you have you know, eight year olds, five year olds, two year olds, 13 year olds, that's different. I understand that. I'm just saying, if you're worried about this and all of your kids are over 18, you need to suck it up and man up and let them live their lives. Don't worry about it. In my case, I got kind of lucky. My son moved out of the United States many years ago. He's an alpha male 2.0, he's location dependent. Good for him, very proud of him. My daughter, who is younger, she's 23, 
she just called me out of the blue, you know, a few weeks ago and laid out a plan for her to move out of the United States within two years. Excellent, good for her. And, and again, I'm an alpha male two father. At no point ever did I tell my kids, you need to move out of the country, you idiots. You're, America's collapsing. I mean, they know my opinions on these things, but I don't tell my kids what to do because I'm an alpha male 2.0 father, not an alpha male 1.0 father. But anyway, I got lucky. There's no guarantee that when your kids grow up, they'll move out of their collapsing Western countries. We'll just have to see what happens. Now, before I get on with the options that you have, all of which kind of suck, you should subscribe to this channel. You should click the dumb notification bell. You should leave a like on this video, leave a comment on this video. And it doesn't matter what you say, the more interactivity I get with this content, the more this content I will provide for you for free. All right. As I see it, you have four options, one of which is very unlikely, all four of which are not that great. But based on what I know, and I've talked to a lot of guys about this, I personally know men who live a international or five flags lifestyle who have small kids, these are your four options. Option one, stay in your horrible collapsing country and suffer. So you can stay with your kids year round, you're gonna stay in your horrible collapsing country and you're just gonna go down with the ship like everybody else. And in that scenario, if you choose that scenario, I strongly recommend, strongly recommend you watch this video on the six things you must do if you choose not to move out of your collapsing Western country and actually take notes and set some goals and actually implement all six of those things. Very, very important. If you just stay in the United States, Canada, Europe, Australia, what have you, you just stay in these countries and just behave like everything's gonna be fine, you're fucked. Boy, are you screwed. You may not be screwed yet, although a lot of you are, but I've already gone through that on many other videos, many other blog posts, I'm not gonna go through that in detail. You're fucked, don't do that. If you're gonna stay and choose option one for the good of your children, fine, you better do those six things or you're in big trouble. By the way, if you're in big trouble, guess what that also means? It also means your kids are in big trouble. So I would use your children as motivating factors to get your shit together instead of just fretting about what to do. You don't wanna fuck up your life when you've got little kids. You don't, I've told men this personally. When you have no kids, you can go fart around and screw up your life all you want. When you have little kids, depending on you, financially, and as a role model, as a father, you can't be a dumbass. You can't be a stupid beta male who just goes down with the ship with the rest of the collapsing West. You've got to get your shit together. So if you're gonna stay in your collapsing Western country, fine, do those six things. Option two is, the obvious one is, go ahead and leave your country. Leave your country and stay away and you will live a much better life. You'll pay less taxes. You'll be much happier. Your sex life will improve. Your financial life will improve. You will open up your life to all kinds of opportunities. You won't be stuck in a collapsing Western country. You'll be location dependent, but you'll miss your kids and your kids will miss you. And yes, that's a problem. So if you decide to do that, uh, you can set up whatever kind of schedule you want to go visit your kids as much as you like. And yes, that would be difficult emotionally. But that is an option. And I have personally known a few guys who did that. They had little kids and they're like, well, my baby mama doesn't want to move out of the country. I'm not fucking staying here and getting my life destroyed because of stupid politicians and psychotic voters. I'm, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And maybe they go back and see their kids for Christmas or what have you. Difficult, difficult emotionally. I agree, that's a tough one, but that is an option. Third option, and this is usually not an option. Rarely, rarely, rarely is this an option, but I'm just throwing it out there because I know I'm gonna get some nitpickers in the comments who are gonna bring this up. This is kind of a guide Disney option. It's very unlikely to actually occur in the real world, but I'm just including it here for the purpose of completeness. And that is to somehow magically convince your baby mama to also move to the same country you are moving to and bring the kids. Probably not gonna happen. Uh, I think it is worth the discussion. I think it is worth you trying once or twice, just once or twice, please. People don't change. People don't give a shit, and women in particular are terrified. When you say move out of the country, women in particular just lose their mind. What? Oh my God. Women are very risk averse as compared to men. It is very rare for women to move out of their countries. There are some. I live in a city called Dubai where there's a lot of those women, but those women are exceptions. So don't expect her to do this. This is kind of more of a Hail Mary. You can give it a shot. Consider your odds of success 5% or less but technically you could give it a try. Now, one thing you could do with her is you could get my course, Escape Plan, at escapeplancourse.com, and you could actually go through that course with her on where I describe the different regions and countries of the world and how much better they are than certain other countries, and that might open up her mind a little, no guarantees, of course, but you can give that a try. That course is how to move out of your collapsing Western country, and how to select a better country or a less bad country than the current country in which you reside. And that may help convince her, 
but to be honest, it probably won't. Now, I have some other thoughts on this option, but I'll cover those at the end of this video. So, the fourth option you have, and this is the option that I recommend, this is the option that I think is least bad of all these options. It is still very bad. You're not gonna wanna do this, but I think this is the least bad option, and this is generally what I tell guys when they ask this question. That is a combination of items one and two. So that is, you move away from your country, but you spend several months a year back in your old country. Pretty simple. So if you're living a location-dependent lifestyle, it shouldn't be any big deal for you, especially considering you're a citizen of your original collapsing Western country, to just set up an annual schedule where you spend one, two, three, maybe even four months a year back in your home country being a father to your children. And the rest of the time, the rest of the year, you're out being a man, living your life, working on your mission, and being happy, and not being affected by Western collapse. I think that's the least bad option, in my opinion. This is just my opinion. This is not Alpha Male 2.0. This is not Sovereign CEO. This is none of that stuff. This is just my personal opinion. I think you should get the fuck out of the collapsing West. I think you should do whatever you need to do in order to do that. I have no problem whatsoever if you spent one, two, three, four months. That's kind of the time frame I'm thinking is one to four months a year back in your home country being a dad to your kids. You could do that as one contiguous visit or you could do maybe two months at the beginning of the year, two months around Christmas, and there you go. And you're still spending a lot of time with your kids while still experiencing a Five Flags International lifestyle and protecting yourself against Western collapse. That's what I think is the least bad scenario. Now, I'm gonna give you a parallel. This is not the same as your scenario because I have no children with Pink Firefly, my current wife, and my kids are grown, but I am married to a woman, Pink Firefly, who is not an alpha 2.0 female. She is a normal everyday person. She doesn't look normal, she looks pretty striking, but she is, in terms of her mental view of the world, she is very traditional American. And when I first told her I was moving out of the country, her eyes you know, turned into dinner plates, like, whoa, what? So what I've had to do, and this might give you some insight into how to do this with your kids, I've had to kind of wean my wife off of the United States. So I moved to Dubai this year. She had to stay for various reasons, a few extra months, which turned into you know, most of the year because of her dumb dog and various COVID reasons. It's a little complicated, but we're probably gonna be reunited permanently, finally, in about three or four weeks, starting November 15th. And what I decided to do with her to help wean her gently away from the teat of the United States is that I've mentioned this before in past videos where we're gonna have a place to stay in Scottsdale, Arizona, which is an American city she really likes. And we will spend, or she will spend, one, two, three, four months a year there. And I am limited by the amount of time I can spend in the United States. I'm limited to about 100, 110 days a year. So she might spend a little more time there than I will. But our primary residence will be in Dubai, but we will spend some time in the United States so she can get her United States fix. And knowing that I didn't want to maintain this forever, I said to her this year a few times, I said, hey, I want to fly back and visit you but I can't go to the United States because I'm limited on the number of days I can be inside the United States to maintain my awesome tax status, which is true. So I said, let's meet in Guadalajara, Mexico, instead of meeting in Portland where she currently has her apartment. And she's like, ew, Mexico, ew, 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 typical American girl who knows nothing about the world. And I said, well, let's trust, let's just try it. You, know, you wanna see me, don't you? She said, yes, I wanna see you, great. So we met in Guadalajara a few months ago for the first time. She absolutely loved it. She's like, this is awesome. Guadalajara is amazing. She loves Guadalajara. Matter of fact, I think she likes Guadalajara, at least Andares Guadalajara, where we currently spend a lot of time. We were just there again last week. I think she likes it more than me. So when I started talking about getting a house, a nice big giant, giant or even fancier house in Mexico, because it's cheaper there than Scottsdale, she didn't fight me at all. She said, that's a great idea. I said, yeah, instead of having Scottsdale, we could live in Guadalajara and get you an even bigger house. And she's like, woo. Now, if I had just told her several years ago, we're gonna live in Guadalajara, Mexico, she would have flipped her lid, right? So sometimes you have to wean people in terms of your baby mama, or maybe you are still in a relationship with baby mama, or you're married to baby mama, or your kids, or your grown kids. That's one example you can use to gently sort of wean people away from their addiction to the collapsing Western world. That may help you, it may not. I just throw that out to you as a possibility. Again, I wish I had better answers for you. Uh, I wish there was a better scenario. It really isn't, it kind of sucks, and I agree, but I think I've given you what I think is the least bad option. And if you want to further your international journey, you can watch this video right here on the first step you need to take to internationalize your life. I will see you in the next video. Have fun, bye.